Hello, hello everybody, this is Tiptop MTG here today with another MTG Arena video. In today's video, we continue Brawl Week with Minsk Beloved Ranger. So this is a Naya deck focused around the commander of Minsk Beloved Ranger, and let's not forget about Boo. Either way, Minsk is a legendary creature, Human Ranger 3-3 three, three, for 3, and when it enters the battlefield, you create a legendary 1-1 one, one red hamster creature token with Trample and Haste, as seen here. And then, Minsk has this ability, and that's kind of the whole point of the deck. You pay X, and until end of turn, target creature you control has base power and toughness XX and becomes a giant in addition to its other types. Activate only as a sorcery. So, looking at the deck, this one is built a little bit different than some of my previous ones, especially here on Brawl Week. A lot of the time, I take what the commander does, and I play it to a T. I mean, I am building around this commander, and if the commander's not out, it is going to severely hamper the deck, and that's how a lot of Brawl decks are built. And this one is really just meant to be a traditional deck, and yes, it is going to take advantage of the commander's ability, but I truly believe this is a deck that could totally win without the commander. But we do have a couple cards that work just really, really well with it. For instance, Wildwood uh, Scourge. It enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters, but it has base power and toughness zero zero, meaning the boost from Minsk is literally just plus X plus X, not just setting base power and toughness. Or for instance, with Fencing Ace and Core Blade Master, both of these, when you boost it up, just have double strike, so essentially you're getting double the value. And then we just have little things here and there, you know, we have boosts, just essentially really cool really good stuff that is just wanting to play some value creatures and then it does have a little bit of um just creatures in here that we want to boost up and kill people with i mean it's kind of simple uh we're both going wide and going big um and we can go you know wide and then create a bunch of different you know tutus and turn all of our creatures into tutus for a decent amount of mana or we can make one huge creature that has double strike we can do lots of different stuff we can get lots of counters on crystalline giant and then make it huge all sorts of really really awesome stuff so it's really just a kind of naya good stuff with the ability to boost your creatures so it's kind of a booster creature style deck uh, and it's really really fun um to play so why don't we jump into it it is of course a little bit less dependent on the commander than all of my other decks and especially tomorrow's which is delina uh who's really focused around the commander this one it's like yeah this hand also isn't very good we have a seven two seven or three seven drops in it that's not great and here we have two lands and all of our low cost stuff is not in the colors um, we are going to mulligan this. So these are not great hands. These ones are, I guess, fine as long as we keep bean stock giant. Um, just because we are able to use the three mana to go get a planes, which then lets us play our white uh, base spells, especially this one, which is really good against commanders. So we're going to do this. We're going to play Tangled Flora Hedon, which actually is a risk because if it does get killed during this next turn... We don't have a land to play, but it does also speed up our Beanstalk Giant if we can keep it out. Also, we do get that land, so this is really going to be ramping us rather than just fixing our colors. Um, there are lots of little sub-themes in here. Um, big reason for this one is that it's a resurrection spell, and then we also have just a decent amount of cards that happen to gain us a little bit of life, and then if you combine that, and that's because lifelink works really well with Minsk. Um, it kind of sucks. It's probably going to be Minimus Containment. Yep. Um, but we're still able to cast it. It's just going to be pretty expensive. Um, we are going to play all set of Life's Bounty. Um, I probably should have played Minsk. Honestly, because then I can swing with the 1-1. One, one. Whatever. Um, we're not able to do that. I'm going to swing with the 1-1. One, one. If he wants to trade, that's fine. 3 damage in the air is actually a lot. Um, yes, I could plummet it, but I feel like he's not going to block, and that is exactly what happens. So we'll see what's up. Uh, one team Malison. This is one of my favorite cards from Forgotten Realms. It's like a really cheap rare. It's like 50 cents. I don't know why, but I just really, really enjoy it. All right. On the bright side, delaying Minsk one turn does mean that we will have the mana to pay for all said to protect Minsk and Boo, I guess. Um, but now Boo can't really attack. Um, so we're just not going to. 
I mean, theoretically, next turn, we could be swinging for, like, seven damage. I probably will always save one mana for Elsed. Uh, he gets to swing through. He gets to go into a dungeon. I assume he's going to go into Mad Mage, but he could go to the Pandelver one. If he goes to Tomb of Annihilation, that's just a mistake. Yeah, Dungeon of the Mad Mage. This one is kind of the more quote unquote greedy one, but it is also really cool. Hmm. I think we, like, this deck has a decent amount of ramp in it just because it is wanting um, to be able to ramp those spells out, get lots of mana to be able to then boost up creatures. Um, I think the play here is to play one of the lands we get from Cultivate activate assuming by the way that nothing here gets killed or this gets countered we are playing against an azorius deck um but assuming all that which he's hovering over a bunch of stuff is a sublime epiphany yeah um that's what i thought he's gonna bounce it to my hand he's gonna make a copy of elite spellbinder that's a little that's a clever combo yeah we'll protect it what the heck Let's just give it pro white. Oh wait, that doesn't protect it. I'm so dumb. I was thinking ahead to attacking and then I just didn't give it the right color of protection. Uh, yeah, see those are the dumb mistakes. So now it's there. Um, we're gonna decline to take it there. Oh, I just swung with, okay, we're just gonna concede. That game just went horribly. I meant to click no attacks and end up swinging with everything. Uh, yeah, so playing and commentating, very difficult. But let's just jump into another game uh, hopefully not royally screw up twice in a row like that. Oh my gosh, that was horrible. Um, yeah, the fact that, oh, Zamathar, that's fun. Um, the fact that I give it pro white thinking about attacking and then continue or proceed to have it be bounced and then go and sacrifice my whole board. Yeah, not great. Um, this is a little bit of a greedy hand to keep. We don't actually have green in it, which we would need for Cultivate. But if we can get that green, it will be pretty awesome. Um, we're going to play this, hoping to get up to at least three mana for Nadar. Nadar can help us with scrying by venturing into the dungeon. Um, but we shall see. Looks like we're not actually going to resolve anything. Oh, I just played that for white. Again, you can tell I'm really on my A game right now. I'm actually thoroughly distracted by not only commentating, but other stuff that's happening in life. Um, I mean, we got red, so that saved us. Um, this is going to get countered, so we can't actually rely on that. Yep. Cool. This is going to be one of those games we just have to hope we can out-counter. Not we're, like, we're not countering their stuff, but hope we just run them out of counters, which I don't think we will. Um, actually, it ends up working out that I played this for white mana. Mm, this is not great. Okay. Let's play Cultivate, get it countered, and then uh, we're just hopefully burning the stuff out of their hand. We can f cast off Xanathar, but I doubt they're going to cast it and then leave themselves with no mana. That doesn't seem like something that would be very wise. And yes, I know I did that in um, my video, but I also... <sighs> See, this is so annoying because it gives them the mana to next turn counter anything after he's ATB'd, but it also does leave him very, very low on uh, mana at the moment, so we are going to swing for two. We got the first damage in. That's exciting. Um, next turn, we could be swinging for actually a lot. Um, we could be swinging for like eight, but I doubt anything on the board is surviving. Um, kind of expecting a board wipe. No, they're casting Xanathar. Ooh, how greedy. Um, I mean, I don't have a removal spell for it, but... Um, let's play our Crystalline Giant. Have it get counters. No, they're not going to counter it. They're going to save it for protection. Um, so this will give it plus three, plus three, making it a five, five. Yeah, so we're going to target this. Did it get countered? This is what I expect to get countered now that I don't have the mana. Yep. Makes sense. Menace. That's going to be really good against Xanathar. Um, this might become my, our new target for Minsk to target. Cool. I don't care. Wasn't That was dumb. You should, by the way, this says 
Um, you may play the top card of their library. If you have any intention of playing the top card of my library, uh, I have no idea what's about to get taken. Um, if you have no intention of playing the top card of my library, I guess, but like, it's clearly not a land. So it's a spell. If he casts this, then he misplayed. Because if there was a land underneath, he could play my land, save a card in his hand, maybe bluff having a counter spell later on in the game, and then also just technically mill me faster if he wants to do something like that. I don't know. I just don't think that was played very well. So let's see what's going to get chosen. E odd, probably. Yeah, odd is definitely getting chosen. Which is tragic for our crystalline giant, but alas. It's not that hard. You don't want to exile your Xanathar. So you're gonna say odd. Come on. You got it. I believe in you. There you go. That took too long. <laughs> oh, I should have. No, well, it's enchanted. I don't know. I was like, I should have blocked that because I'm about to get a new boo, but eh. Oh, and he knows that's here. He has a count. Okay. Um, you know what? Let's have fun this game. Let's just let's just do this. I mean, it's probably gonna get counterspelled, but maybe maybe they won't. I get something out of this. Oh, they're just gonna cast Ebon Death. That's very random. Torbrand. I'm good with that. You know, I'm going to deal four damage. Um, yeah, that's that's not bad. Okay, taking the card off the top. Um, putting a counter on that, hitting me for 11. That's not bad. It does put him up. I mean, is there a way I could, like, knock him out somehow? It's annoying that he always gets to know what I'm drawing, and then, like, if it's removal spell. So I never get to take out Xanathar now. Because if it's a removal spell, it's getting cast on my stuff. Um, Hmm. So make it four, up it to six. I think we're just dead. Yeah, we're just dead. But you know, actually, we're not just dead. This has another mode on it. So we're going to swing with Torbrand. And then just make sure he can't flash that out. So we're going to... Mm, but I also don't want him to draw a card. Has another creature died? Okay, I'm about to be sad if he can kill one of my creatures and then recast Ebon Death, but I really don't want him to draw another card. Um, oh, he can just counter that. All right, now I'm dead. Unfortunate. Um, I always like to go back against control decks and just look at their graveyard and then realize how sad it is <laughs> that every single spell they cast was removal, except for Ebon Death and Xanathar. And even Xanathar ends up being removal because you steal your opponents. But that's fine. Let's move on to the next game. Hopefully I can actually get some spells to resolve. Um, and actually get to... See, it's in a little... Like, I, I know I get frustrated in video. I normally don't get frustrated against control decks. Whatever, you can play your stupid control deck. I just get frustrated because I'm trying to show what the deck does. And then you go up against, like, a heavy control deck that basically isn't good because it has so much control. But I'm just trying to showcase what the deck does and I can't because nothing resolves. Um, and that gets really frustrating. All right, this hand's fine. Uh, Yorvo, something I'm thinking about taking out of the deck, but it's good because it's a 0-0 zero, zero, that's like basically a 4-4, four, four, but triple green in a three-color deck can be quite tricky. Yes, yes, yes. Let's see. Witching well. All right. Let's play the green. We're, our goal is the Lava Brink Venture, which can get protection which is really awesome when it gets big because it's potential to uh, be able to just swing past everything. This is, I think, going to be a better game. Seems like it. Um, they are obviously playing, like, two out of the three most control -y colors, but um, I think it'll be fine. We're actually going to take this opportunity to play Minsk, not uh, Lava Brink Venturer, just so we can get that one damage in with Boo. Um... I mean, that's not the only reason. I just feel like, oh. Oh, okay. That's fine. Poor Minsk. Never gets to really stick around. Um, 
Hmm, let's do Alcide and Lava Brink. Uh, and we are going to... I know we don't really get to choose anything now. His commander is going to be Odd, so let's play, pick Odd. Yeah. Also, a lot more removal spells in the Odd mana cost. So he's going to ramp, get lots of stuff, and then... Okay. I mean, this is a pretty typical Jorn deck, but he's done so much ramping, he has to have something pretty cool in his hand. Also, I do not remember this. Like, I remember this card, but I should put that in more decks. It's, like, really good. Um, let's play Minsk. I want my commander. I know I said this deck isn't built around the commander, and it's really not, but there are lots of cards that do really cool stuff when you have your commander. And I know that was greedy. I know I should have saved one more mana... Played Guild Goose this turn, next turn had the mana to protect Minsk, but it's fine. If he's gonna... I swear if everything is odd, except for Minsk. Oh, that's always devastating. I guess I spoke too soon. This, I guess this, this is a board wipe deck. It's fine, we have our 1-1. One, one. That soon will be big and strong. Um, all right, this will make it big enough to be able to just block Jorn, um, but does let us draw that card. We get the forest, pretty cool. Okay, I would have put all that glitters on Satesan Champion so that Jorn couldn't attack, but then Satesan Champion has, Satesan Champion is already a, a, a high value target for our opponent's removal. It's basically a lightning rod. And so I don't know if I need to be adding the fact that, I, that he'd be two for wanting me. Now he's going to tap to play Uro. Wow. Never seen that card before. Let's see. The fact that he's tapping everything manually, I don't know why that bothers me. And he has so much mana that killing Jorn really doesn't do anything. And let's just block it. If he has some boost spell, whatever it was meant to be. Why did you play that like that? You could have done that first. I probably wasn't going to block and then would have... See, I don't get that. It's like, just... just I, I don't know. Whatever. And then arrow. One thing this deck lacks is a lot of removal, which is really needed in Brawl. You need to be basically removing every other permanent your opponent plays. Um, otherwise, you're just not playing Brawl right. That's just how it goes. Um, yeah. Because it's like, yeah, Brawl is a game of bombs, and if you don't have enough single target removal, you lose. And Commander's a little bit different because, you know, everyone has the removal. And so, like, if one person plays something problematic, there are three people that could remove it. So you generally play less removal. But in Brawl, I would say, like, I don't know, 20% of your cards. If 20% of your cards are removal, you're going to win more. But that's not fun. I don't want to just show you a video of me drawing a bunch of removal spells. You've seen that. That is Xanathar. That is Lol. Lolth. Lolth. Lolith. I have no idea how to say it. But it's like, uh, I just gonna con I'm just going to concede. We're going to do one more game. And if they have blue and black in their colors, I'm just going to concede. And we're going to do a different game. I want to fight a mono green deck. That's what I want. It's not going to happen. This is going to be Garouk something. It's going to be a control deck. Luca, you know what? Mono red, I'm good with this. I am so good with this. Cool. Hmm. All right. Waiting for him to tip. Oh, well, okay. I was like, I'm waiting for him to tip with the trickery. All right, then we play Minsk. Um, have Minsk get blown up. No, no, no. This game's going to be better. I can feel it. Or not. Minsk doesn't even get the boo trigger. Oh, 
tragic. I'll learn. I'll learn one of these days to always have protection for the commander. But it's just so satisfying to play your commander. It's like you're not losing a card out of your hand. It's great. Um... Honestly, Mad Mage is a trap. I like Pandelver. It just gives you lots of value. Um, honestly, well, I think I need to rebuild this deck. This deck just, I don't know. It feels like it goes in too many directions. It has lots of little sub-themes, and oftentimes they work together, but sometimes you get weird combinations. Uh, it's just often there's like not enough things to support this, so it ends up just being Naya weird stuff instead of Naya good stuff. make sure this doesn't say anything about not being prevented yeah that's what i thought i thought i was like i think it does oh wait i forgot i don't target the spell i target the creature this time i'm going to give it protection from the correct thing okay um let's go here and swing with nadar which lets us venture we're going to create a 1-1 one, one Goblin. And we'll see what happens here. Um, then we are going to have Dryad of the Eelson Grove be a creature, and then we're going to save Tybalt's Trickery. We're going to focus less on our commander and just try to build out a good board. Um, this is probably a mistake, given the nature of a Luka deck. But you know what? I will gladly trade him having Luka for Maze Mind Tome. Uh kind of funny and then yeah no no attack there that's pretty cool um let's see what do we want to do i mean there's no time like the present to play minsk and what we're gonna do we're actually going to put the counter that we get from attacking on Minsk, which is then going to make him much harder to kill because that we're playing against a red deck. Um, I don't care. Let's keep the new Boo. Oh, no, we're not attacking with Boo, though. We're attacking with Nadar. And when he attacks, we are putting a counter on a creature, and that counter is going on Minsk. Which, you know, you might say, oh, he's already Lightning Rod for removal. Why add more fuel? But I also feel like a lot of things in red deal three damage, there are way less that deal four. So, the fact that he topped that concerns me, but I'm hoping it's like a land. Oh, okay. That's fine. And then he's going to transmogrify it, this kind of deck. Oh, uh, Brash Taunter, I'm not worried about it. I mean, I am a little bit. Um, but if we can... If we, have, if we can put Trample on something, like Boo, I'm not worried about it at all. Um... So when we swing, we're going to complete the dungeon, which is going to give everything plus one, plus one. But I have to think about what I'm boosting, because Rune of Might is going to give Trample, which means we only have to deal one damage to the Brass Taunter. So what we're going to do is we are going to give this Trample to Nadar, and it's going to make him bigger. We're also going to draw the card, and then we're going to pay four mana, which is only actually going to boost him up one. I don't like that. We're going to we're going to pay 4 mana and we're going to make boo a 4/4. Four, four. Um and we're going to swing with both of these creatures. And they both have trample, so we should and they're also both going to become 5/5s five um or I guess one's going to be 4/4, four, four, one's going to be 5/5. Five, five. And he's going to block this and he's not going to know the rules about damage distribution. And so the fact that I only have to deal one damage. Cool. Now we have plus one plus one on everything because of Nadar. Um, and we have two creatures that can pretty comfortably attack. Embercleave could make it three by giving everything Trample. Because honestly, Trample is Brash Taunter's worst enemy. Of course, Brash Taunter can fight into big creatures. And so that's always a concern is if I make a creature huge, I can get hit for it. But Embercleave is just so devastating. I think we win just based off of that. But we shall see. This is kind of what the deck wants to do. It wants to get the board presence, go kind of wide, but also be able to boost the, just the right creature with the right stats in. 
cool, does five damage to me, that's fine. You can pay three mana, especially when I'm about to win. That makes it a little more difficult. But, um, you know, if I swing with all five, that makes this two red mana. Right? So that means I can boost something up four. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's going to be Nadar. Oh, no. Uh, no, 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 no. It's going to be Boo. No, you're not going to mess me up here. You are not going to not leave me with the mana for Ember Cleave. And then I'm going to swing with everything. We're going to venture into the dungeon. And we're going to make each player lose one life to make this slightly trickier for them to uh, figure out the math for. And then once they figured out the math, we give the thing double strike. Okay. Because so we're going to give the thing double strike and then win. So that's how the deck wants to win. It uses, you know, a couple dungeons, which are pretty cool, just as versatility cards. And then wants to win by just pretty much swinging out with big creatures. Very, very fun. Uh, more of a traditional style of magic deck. And it's more fun when you go up against, like, a creature deck versus a creature deck, I think is really interesting. Uh, and so I'm kind of glad we got to see that a little bit in that last game. Um, either way, if you want to see the deck list, it is in the description down below. And tomorrow is our final day of Brawl Week. After that, I'm going to put up a poll on my channel where you can vote on what your favorite commander was. If you enjoyed, hit that like button. Subscribe to see tomorrow's episode and a bunch more. I will see you in the next one. Bye.